and plants. Hmm. Let's see. The two reports at the end that they call me. I certainly know it's come by. <laughs> The time is 4.30 p.m. Pelican Rapids Council meeting of 14 May 2024 is called to order. I ask those in our council chambers, if you have not signed in, please sign the clipboard by the back door before you leave and ask everybody please put their cell phones on vibrate. Roll call of members, Daniel. Councilmember Steve Strand. Here. Councilmember Kevin Ballard. Here. Councilmember Kurt Markgraf is absent. Councilmember Steve Foster yeah. and Mayor Brent Fraser. Here, I want to welcome everyone here in the City Council Chambers and all, also those joining us by Zoom. Remember our City Council meetings are seen on Pelican Rapids YouTube channel and also on Channel 14 on Wednesday evening. Just a few announcements for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Wednesday, May 15th uh, at noon, that's tomorrow, complete streets. A public meeting at the public library on uh, Sunday, May 19th, hydrant flushing from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday, May 20th, uh, that is Minnesota legislature adjourns for the year. On uh, Monday, May 27th, Memorial Day, City Hall offices will be closed. Memorial service will be held at 10 a.m. at Trinity Church this year. And then Tuesday, May 28th, 4.30 p.m., is our next city council meeting here in the council chambers. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? Hearing none, if we all please stand. Okay. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, thank you. Citizens' comment. Anyone here for citizens' comments? I think none. We'll go to item number three is addition deletions to the agenda. I have one deletion under the consent agenda. Item number four G. Please delete item number four G. Any other additions or deletions? I move to accept the agenda. Do we need G under consent agenda? Second. Motion second. Discussion. 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 Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed the same. Motion carried. Item number four, which I will read. Item four A is approval of council minutes from April 30th, 2024. 4B is approval of council payable listing 4C. One is financial report, which is in the packet. 4C. Two is police chief report, which is in the packet. 4D is Pelican Rapids Chamber of Commerce gambling permit, October 12, 2024. The FW Post 5252 October test. Item 4E is club on sale for license and Sunday on sale. It's not a matter on behalf of Gilmore Week Post 5252. 4F is small liquor license for Luke Lorzell, proprietor for Paul and the Pelican Incorporated. Item 4H is small liquor license for Charles Evenson, proprietor for South Down Sea Stone. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move the consent agenda. Motion second. Discussion? 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 Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. All the same. Motion carried. Item number five is EDA update. We have one, one bullet point under their uh, Chamber of Commerce lease to vacate. And there was something in the packet regarding that last administrative event. Yeah, so this is just from the chambers. They're terminating the lease agreement at Historic City Hall. So this is just our, our notice. Um, and they're able to do that in the contract. So um, I think we'd probably need a motion just to approve it, I suppose. Approve the rental agreement. Second. Motion, second. Discussion. 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 Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All the same. Motion carried. Anything else there, Len? Daniel? Right. Is there anything? Um, well, they they were asking if we would accept so. So according to the agreement, they give us 30 days notice. Um, and so they gave us notice on the 8th. They said they'd be out on the 18th and they're asking if we'll prorate it for them. Okay. Oh, so that's total it, that he wanted. Yeah, so I guess what he was asking for was fifty dollars less Nina? total. Yeah, yeah, because you're looking for a motion. I yes. I'm not quite sure. <clears throat> motion second discussion. So they were paying rent. Yeah, they paid. Yeah, they paid rent monthly. Two fifty a month. Yeah. Any more discussions? Hearing none. All in favor, say by saying aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> Item number six is downtown trees, and there was a uh, few diagrams in our packet and. Talking about tree grape outlets and speak for All right. So first things first. Well, Kevin brought up last time that um, he thought that the council should have approved the trees downtown, and you were correct. So last time when Tom Pace was here, uh, it was been several months ago now when he was, when he brought this visual quality manual to us. Um, he laid it all out, and I went back and looked at the meeting, and he did say, "Okay, so you guys approved." The, basically the kind of trees, the kind of benches and all that kind of stuff, but not necessarily the trees downtown. And he stated then he would come back in a month or so and, and present and have you guys approve the actual location of the trees. Well, that never happened. So what I put in the packet was the actual visual quality manual that he presented. And then the red X's were the one, the trees that were actually taken out of the final plan. They just didn't fit. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that needs to go in there, signs, street lights, all these other things, water shutoffs. So this is from the school here, that first one in the packet, the school is here. So all these trees are just in the boulevard like they were before. So those aren't such a big deal. Starting across from the fire hall is where the first tree grate is. So right in front of the gas station there. Um, and so the, all these are in. So there's about, what, seven on this couple blocks here. Next page. So this is actually in between the roundabouts here. So there's actually only 11 in between the roundabouts now. So those three that got X'd out there, they, they were actually in the visual quality manual, but they got taken out of the final plans. And then this is north of the roundabouts. So these, this next block in front of the liquor store, and then here, those are all tree grates as well. Anything north of that is just in the boulevard. They're not tree grates. What's the difference between the solid green circle and the just the green circle? I think it's the different types of trees, I believe. Are you showing the tree grate downtown there? 
What's that? The circled uh, hollow ones are showing. Are they well, not showing? These are all ho oh, these are all hollow too. So I'm guessing it's just the different types of trees that they're putting in. But and then this, there's smaller ones here. What was the total number downtown? There's eleven between the roundabouts right now in the plans. In the original visual quality manual, there was 14, but now it's down to 11. So I think first things first, you can discuss what you want for trees and you can also kind of discuss, I know there's one business owner that does not want a tree in front of his business. Are we going to entertain those? Are we going to just do what the council wishes, or are we going to go to every business and ask, or is that going to open up a can of worms, or what What your wishes are? Is every store owner been pre actually presented this and asking if they want it or not? Certainly haven't. I mean, it's no. been a unification committee, and every, I mean, everything has been open, and but it's not like we've gone door to door and asked specifically yeah, everyone. Business owners have looked at the this the vacation. The so right. the business owner that said they did not want a tree didn't know if there was going to be necessarily a tree for the business or not. I had just been talking to him, and I know I saw the plan, so I knew there was going to be one out there. So, and I knew he was against the trees, but. But. And that's the one, let's see, yeah, here. So if you take that out, then there's only three on this side and there's a big gap here then in the trees as well. So I don't I don't know what the best answer is. Well, in fact, that one at Pelican Drug is right in front of their door. You know, where they've got a place that... Yeah, and these could move a little bit and during when they actually completely get it finalized and up the grade and where everything is too, but I mean, a few feet here and there, but. What's the timeline on this? Well, they'd be starting to put, I mean, these ones in the first roundabout, they'd be starting these tree grates in the next couple of weeks. They'd be putting tree grates in. Right in front of Big John, right in front of them. Both of these, yeah. Sure. Um, I don't have our billboard for our for our business is on the side of my truck, so we drive that around. But these guys have signs and stuff on there on the front of their buildings. That's the name of their business. You know, if we put a tree in front of it, I don't know. I guess I would be kind of questioning that too, but. I guess it's all up to the individual business and whatever. I'm sure they all don't think alike. And whoever has a business that doesn't want a tree or wants a tree, probably they sell the business five years from now, and the other person will have a totally opposite. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do point. I personally think they should. I mean, if they can be moved a little bit, it would be one thing, you know. But to pl plop one right in front of the door. Yeah, I mean, you didn't know there's a wide sidewalk, but I also kind of on the fence because I see a lot of maintenance, but I also see that there's nothing down there that you're just going to be in a concrete kind of like what it was, other than benches and maybe a planter here and there. But so the tree committee picked up like the trees, correct? So what are we looking at? What kind of trees? Uh, Tom kind of laid all that out. I've got some of them here. Where are they? It wasn't, weren't they in the minutes from that? 
Here's some of them here. How tall do they get? Well, there's a wide variety there. The ones out, out kind of outside of downtown, they were the 20, 30 footers, but the ones inside the roundabouts in downtown were only like 15 feet, I believe. So we got a spring snow crab apple, a Shiloh splash river birch, red rock maple, honey locust, another maple, Kentucky coffee tree, a linden, and another maple. So just kind of about three different types of maple and then some other ones. So there's a whole bunch of varieties then that are going to be. Yeah. Are the varieties going to be scattered or are they? Yeah, as part of their, I mean, that's, that's, That's what these are, I think, is different varieties. So the smaller ones and larger. Maybe they'll be similar downtown, just in terms of the, the height. There's only a couple of them that can fit, can, that can be downtown, right? Oh, so you know, some of these other varieties are going to be along yeah. outskirts. Yeah. Like okay. up, yeah. For the tricky plant the school where they cut down those big trees, that will yeah. be the bigger trees. But, you know, okay. They looked at root systems downtown when they put them in so they didn't. They didn't have great big root systems and size and shapes and all of that. Well, I got in trouble with one of the committee members when I said I would not, I don't want trees on the phone. I like trees, but I guess, like I said, um, it, it, you know, it, it should be almost up to the business owner where they want their their sign of their business block. But right. at the same time, if you open that, like you said, that we'll have one tree on this side of the on the street and a shrub and a bush on the other side of the street. There's, so, there's also businesses downtown that can't have a tree because there's other stuff there. Maybe that business owner wants a tree and can't have it. I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> You're not much help. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I said that before. There's there's people out there who want 50 trees downtown, and there's right. some that don't want any. This seems like a fairly decent compromise where there's only 11 down there right now. Um, and they are specific to the downtown where they're not going to get huge. They're not going to shed too many leaves and make such a huge mesh mess i don't think at least that's what they tell us but there's there will be some maintenance to them and i believe they're guaranteed for two years and then they're turned over to right yeah and these won't get planted until the fall of 2025 so they'll that's kind of a, the, the actual trees themselves are a separate contract so the tree company comes in when everything is done and they'll plant every one of them all the way 108s and 59 so So are we just kind of deciding where the grading is going to go tonight? Yeah, I'd like, a, so like you said, to be, if you want them or if you don't want them. Or, I think it's so outside of the roundabout, outside of the tree grates, I think outside in the boulevards and things, there's really no questioning there that no. the trees will go there, right? Everybody's for yeah. that. We don't really have to worry about that. It's just the actual. The trees they cut, huh? We're just looking just the tree grade areas, downtown. which is between the roundabouts and basically two blocks to the south and one block to the north of the roundabouts. How big are the grades we're talking about? What do they look like? They're four by four. They're the grades similar to the previous results. I think there's a picture in here somewhere, I believe. Would they, yeah. The, the grates are really only just downtown, right? they're not doing yeah. grates. No, they're just downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Here's From a picture of all the liquor store. Put something similar here. Why is this not? Because they're in concrete downtown in the sidewalk. Outside, they'll be in the boulevards. They're both four by four. Looks like something they could. 
Sorry, no cheer comment. <laughs> he made the comment. He's on the fence. Yeah. Oh, I can't be on the fence. Well, like Steve said, I know the beautification community spent a lot of time on trees and they wanted they did want them downtown, and that's their recommendation, I guess. So yeah. I feel like eleven's a lot, but well, you as a council, you can have as many down there. I mean, if you want to cut others out, that's up to you guys as well. Well, are they going to put these in in the next couple of weeks, the grates? Or... Well, like I said, then, so in this south roundabout, they're working there now. So these two grates over here, and then the ones on the other side, well, there aren't any on this first block. So it would just be those two, like by Krekelbergs and Pelican Drug, they'd be put in here in the next couple of weeks, probably next week. The, I mean, they'll hopefully start pouring some curb this week yet, but they'll be starting doing sidewalks and all that, so they would be... They'd be putting in those grates by like Arco. Yeah, as they move that way, they will. But right now, they're just working on just around they're just going to first tier this first yeah. round of concrete and stuff. So, so these two right here would be put in, in the next couple of weeks, but. I'm glad they decided to take the tree out that's on the bridge since there's no dirt underneath it. That was a good call. <laughs> well, this, well, this did come as a recommendation from the beautification, correct? Yeah, I know they they wanted trees downtown. I think in the very beginning they had like 22 or 25 or three or something downtown. Exactly. That was in a lot. Too so many. This was a nice compromise from that, honestly. But when we say 11, we have to. Designate the locations in our model. Well, what's what's, what's yeah. presented in the final? This is what's presented in the final plans for this. So this is what they're planning on doing. I mean, but but they they said even last meeting they said if the council doesn't want any of them out, we can take them all out too if they want it. But or you could take. I mean, you can't add any in any different any locations now because this is basically where the only places that they can fit. But you could take some out if you wanted. Or mm -hmm. so no the. Little tree that's in between the two, the in front of MB Salon, right here. Yeah, how is that going to work with the uh entrance to the new parking lot that's where the Rapids building is? So, the actual entrance is just yeah, that that is right next to it, <laughs> but that was let's see, I've got another. So, yeah. Well, the entrance is actually over where that little passageway is over to the left. The entrance will be just south of Envy. Yeah, starting just south of yeah. Envy. But that's still... That's... They could possibly shift it a few feet as well. I don't know. You may have to just do to where her service goes in there. Yeah. Well, those are all going to go in later. It's the ones in the south end that they're going to be putting in, right? These two that you'd have to figure out soon, yeah. So when we think about it, you know what? They need to know. Yeah, we can't think about it. <laughs> But yet again, we're with the time is of the essence. Well, really, technically, I mean, if they put in a couple tree grates here and you decide not to have any trees down there, they fill them in with concrete. It's not like. Oh, God damn it. So.
I guess I guess it's it's rough if we already know that we have one business owner that does not want to treat his own inventory. Now you, you find yourself in the situation of making that business owner take one for the team and have a tree in front of their business or talking to the rest of the businesses and all of a sudden you're going to have it will look borderline ridiculous now because one guy won't want it, the next guy will want it. I'll take two, put a third one here. And then when they're lit up for Christmas, it's going to look a little crappy. If they're lit up for Christmas, yeah. that's further down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I know you can walk across the street down there, and the other business guy will say, I'd like to have 30 trees downtown. Yeah. Since we're only talking about the south part of the street for right now, I'll make a motion that we approve this plan for the south part of the street, and then we. Uh, do some reconsideration for the north part. South of the bridge and yep. Yeah. South of the bridge. South of the bridge. Second. Motion second. Discussion. I think more than two. Well, just, just two here. For right now, yeah, though. There'll be actually Seven total south of the roundabout, but they they won't be getting to those. Yeah, that's not coming up right. I'm just talking yep. about that south half of that main block here from the river south. These two right here. Yep. That's that's in your realm of thinking or planning. That's fine, but. I'd like to know exactly what you guys want then to figure out if you approve the ones to the north, then if we're going business to business or. Well, I'm probably going to have to, yeah. But we didn't go Not necessarily. Oh. So asking basically as a whole, do they want trees downtown? We can't ask everyone, do you want one in front of yours place or not? It's as a whole, do you want trees downtown? Because some businesses, it's not possible to have a tree downtown. Yeah, yeah. I guess I would. You could ask that question and show them that picture and ask if they are okay with displacement because this is the plan. And if there happens to be one in front of their business, that's luck of the draw, basically. Okay. Uh, but that's, like I said, that's where it gets into. Yeah. You're, I mean, the committee's put in a lot of work. Yeah. And I don't want to go against what they've done there. So that's all right. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All the same. Motion carried. Anything else there, Les? Well, now on to the tree grade outlets, so that kind of will be pushed off as well, but <laughs> I will just update you. So so the two grades that you just approved there, we kind of gave up on getting outlets in there because this crossing, the power crossing there is just, just won't work. Um, they can't plow it in, they can't, well, it needs to be five feet deep according to MnDOT. And there's storm sewer in there at a little over two feet and then the water sewer and all that stuff. So it would have to be dug in and they, they're not, Jason is not comfortable with doing that after it's all packed and good. So I think we're, these two are kind of out of the question right now. So we'd focus on just one meter, one feed point. If the council decides to put these tree grates in or these tree grates in, we could come as a feed point out of historic city hall come across and feed all the all nine of these. And that price just for the conduit alone would be about $4,500. Yeah, 
in the winter? So when I talk to an electrician, his price basically for all, all of these was like 15,000 for the wire, the outlets and everything. So it should actually eliminating these couple, still, I mean, 15,000 is probably a dis decent estimate for, for right now. Having just these Different nine and not these two. Having these nine lit up and not these two, is that what you said? I mean, there's options you could do solar lights for these two if just these two trees. I mean, we so they haven't put any conduit in yet. If we go to the meeting tomorrow and there's a way that we could actually do it, if you guys wanted to prove trying to do it, we certainly could. If not, we can scratch it. Because the we have we actually have the permit from MnDOT to do it. It's just that we have to get five feet deep here, and it's just that's the that's the issue. If Jason actually comes up with an idea tomorrow at the meeting, it could be possible, but I wouldn't count on it. But so if we put the conduit in place, when would the wire have to be put in place? Like I said, the trees aren't going to go in until the fall of twenty twenty five. So. The wire is still to it. Yeah. I mean, even when the trees are in, the wire doesn't necessarily have to be in. It's whenever the funds are available or whenever we can budget it for a couple different years. Or... Where, where will the money where would the money come from? Maybe. For the actual conduit install. Um right now we have that the uh, temporary easement or the easement money that we got from the state, that was about that $30,000 that we got for all of our properties in the project. It could come out of there. If there was any inkling in our mind, we want to do it, now would be the time. <laughs> you just can't do it in the future. Why? Huh? Why? Put in the condo? Sure. Oh. <laughs> you can't. So here's my, my observation. And I'm not saying I'm holding against it or for it, but my reservations are one, three weeks, four weeks into the project, and we're already looking at a $25,000 add-on. Two, it's added. So how long does it take to put up Christmas lights? Now you guys have to put Christmas lights on every tree. Are you going to leave them on there all winter or all summer? Are they going to stay up once they're up? Are you going to replace the bulbs every year? We have guys that we're going to be paying to do that. I don't see that so much. I really think I see businesses taking care of these trees, wanting to promote that. Um, so do we make it part of Petyville? Give it to those guys. And, and do we? Who knows? But I, you know. And if you know, if we have to do a few trees. It's not going to be the end of the world. The not. question was brought up about the electricity. We probably have to pay electricity regardless, so I'm not really worried about that. I just think it's if you can promise me, guarantee me, put it in writing that if we go with this right now, there will be no other add-ons for the rest of the project. Because <laughs> we're three, we're we're a month in, and we're talking a guesstimate yeah, well, of this, twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. This. It's sort of an add-on to the project, but it isn't. It isn't the project per se. This is an yeah. afterthought. Yeah. yeah, but it's really easy to spend other people's money, and it's taxpayer money. It's, honestly, it's personally impossible because there's changes on the move that. Well, I that yeah, I understand. Yeah. That's why I said it that way because we're already. But I mean, we're a month. We're a month in, and we're yeah. We made it a long time. <laughs> Well, I, not really, because we just started talking about this last month. Right. We were a week and a half into it. 
So I don't, you know, I don't know. So we could do a battery on each, right? Light it up for No, I mean these. Oh, these new batteries. Oh, I don't know. Very good for that. We have easement money that's been paid. But doesn't that easement money go to the property owner, not where the, the city property owner? Yeah. City fund. Right now, it's sitting in the project fund. So if it doesn't get used here, it would be used for any, uh, anything yeah. else in the projects. Um, what's the cost on the economy? You other guys can convince me. Sure. But we you have did. to give the money back. No. no. What's the cost of the conduit? Conduit alone on just the north of the bridge. If you just did north of the bridge, would be about 4500 If you wanted to do these two trees here, and if it it's possible and it worked out that would be about 17 50. so the only place there would be christmas lights on trees be in front of the guy that didn't want it <laughs> <laughs> uh, in between, in between the, uh, just in between the roundabouts is all we're talking yeah and possibly just north of the bridge to the round north roundabout It would be, I mean, with Petyville growing and uh, I think that would be a nice addition and they, they may help out with lighting those trees at some point. I don't want trees, so. I don't know. How would you go to well, so north of the bridge, you haven't you haven't decided if you want trees or not. So I guess I'm not looking for anything to to approve conduit or not because we don't know for sure if the trees are going to be there. But you did approve these two here, so of course about seventeen eighteen hundred dollars to do the conduit here. You said that they might not be able to do that. It might not be possible, but I don't think so because that's about the same height as the storm sewer is right there. Well, the storm sewer is only like a little over two feet deep, but so we'd have to get under that. And I don't know. But the bottom is. All right. Yeah. It, it would be about, we need to get about six feet deep, basically. You go by the sanitary. Well, I guess I look at, we have the funds on hand. And we've spent money on other things that we shake our head at afterwards and say, why are we spending money on that? We have the funds and in the future, somebody will say, why didn't they plan ahead and do this? It was a pretty simple task at that time. It was now or never for the conduit. And again, it's the trees. If you're not gonna put trees in, you don't need conduit. Don't do this. Well, I know, but they were talking about doing this fairly soon, were they not? Well, this conduit on the on the south side of the bridge would go in maybe yet this week, right. or it should be this week. But now there isn't any conduit on the south side. <laughs> right? Well, we have it in the we have a permit from MnDOT and we could do it. The problem is, is this crossing right here. So we're still not. I'm not positive that we can make it work. But that's the only place there's going to be conduit on the south side of the bridge. Right? right, these two trees, yeah. So my thinking was we, I mean, to simplify it and just have the one feed point, you'd have one meter, you could feed all these trees. And you said it, would, it might look goofy. Well, there's a big space in between trees across the bridge anyway, if, if they didn't get lit up. But two, two of those solar lights, solar Christmas lights here would probably solve that. And you'd still have nice, these nine would be lit up nice. You could do two solar lights on the south of the bridge. 
So if you tentatively think that's a good idea, there's no, no motions that need to be made because these two tree grates, you, you approve those. We're not doing any conduit there. And next council meeting or so, we can talk about these again. I can get more information from the businesses downtown, whether they want trees or not. Uh, if they don't, all these are taken out anyway. If they do, and you approve the layout here, then we can talk about the conduit on the north side. So is that where we're at? Do you happen to know how many downtown business owners are on the beautification committee? I've got a list of the enemies. I was going to say, I know for sure one. And actually, Zeno was on there. The chiropractor was down there at that point. So, the two businesses that were represented downtown, one closed and moved on its town. And the other isn't going to open up his business again in the foreseeable future. There's the list of the beautification committee right there. Does say we're developed as part of the public involvement process. Can you say that again a little bit louder? It does say this was part of a public um, involvement process and community members both participated. So I would I'm guessing they went and got some input felt they did it in that situation. Has the council seen this beautification plan before in its entirety? Yeah. Yep. Tom Pay came and presented it. So you you do not need any action from us? I mean, if you're all right with no, yeah, that's where we're at. So um Basically, you approve these two tree grates for now. We won't have conduit to them. Um, we'll get more information from business owners on these trees. So next council meeting, we can talk about whether you want them or not. And then we can talk more about whether you want conduit in there. So we've got a little time on that side. Okay with everybody? Anything else? Okay. Nope. Move on. Item seven, street department report. Ryan. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Brent, you did mention there in your uh, announcement, but we will be doing hydro flushing this week. Um, says 73 i have a feeling we'll be done fairly early we're going to do about just about half of the hydrants just because we're only feeding with one six inch line to the whole top of town so um, we will put it out on, on social media that you will lose water pressure um pretty pretty uh confident that will happen especially in the south so just due to the lack of pressure we're getting um we did start our, our summer hours here two weeks ago, just due to it's been a nice spring and construction project. And so we're working seven to 4.30 and seven to 11 again. So um, street projects going well. They're actually um, have the sanitary sewer in all set the manhole at second Avenue Southeast today. So they're, they're moving to the South and they're, uh, trying to put some services into the businesses as they come. So it has been uh, moving along. Um, 
the airport, that annual ultralight, the, the parachute guys, they will be out here again this year, um, the weekend of July 19th. And so they will, they usually come out, the one guy sets up usually that Wednesday, so I'm guessing he'll be there 17th or 18th. And um, that's one of the things that they, they love it out there. They, they can't have enough fun. So one of the things I'd like to look at for them is, um, and for others, maybe, you know, maybe other people want to come out and do some flying too, but um, getting some more power for them, um, for their campers and stuff. They, right now they kind of run makeshift generators and they're running cores here and there. And, um, can't always run their air conditioning because there is the power in the 110 outlet. So, but we can discuss that at a later date. Um, Did you say that was the 19th? Yeah, July. Yep. Parks and the pool. Pool is coming on. We had a meeting there this morning. They're putting in the sanitary uh, sewer now. So, um, hopefully, knock on wood, this weekend we can open the bathhouse. We weren't able to last weekend because we didn't have water or sewer. So, um, this he says this week and he'll even temporary the water if he has to, but the sanitary will be in there. So, that should be opening. Um, as you can tell, we cleaned out Historic City Hall and brought the table to the library and brought showcases up here. So that building is, is empty. And I was upstairs today and it also looks like the chamber has moved some stuff out of up there just so they're, they are working on it. Um, so the person that we had hired to mow earlier uh, this spring I decided not to take the job after um, after some consideration. So um, with that, I need to hire somebody else, which um, I went to the next application so we could get somebody going. Um, I would like to hire Ian Spade at a rate of the $20 an hour that that position is. That spelling is I-A-N-F-A-H-J-E. At what rate? Twenty dollars an hour. Yep. That's the only other person you needed. For That's the only one we need, other than lifeguards. Um, <laughs> at this point, we have four lifeguard applications, so we will. Oh. We'll be. And we need how many? Well, we need four per shift. So we'll uh, we'll continue to work here. Um, hopefully, once summer gets out, our school gets out here in the next week, maybe some kids be like, "Oh, I can. I want to do that." Try to arrange to get them all trained at the same time. So that is that is what we need. So I'll move we hire Ian Bay, Bay or Bay, Bay. Okay. Yeah. Motion and second discussion. Discussion. Where did he start? It's approved. Um, Story started right yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, oh, good. I had to. I, I'm, I'm way behind on that. I needed, needed this, but yeah, yesterday he has started. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say the public. Aye. 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 All in the same? Motion carried. <clears throat> that is my report if you want to talk about the monument. Yeah, go ahead. They one, one of the members was supposed to be here, but something came up and they couldn't be. So the VFW has taken the plaque out of the monument down at 108. In 59. Um, what they would like to do is put up a monument similar, but maybe not quite as big, around the cannon in Veterans Park. Um, they have applied for grants. They have assured me there's no, no cost to the city. It's them putting this up through a grant that they're they're hoping to get. So um they'll they'll take the plaques that they took out of that one downtown and place in that other. So, uh, I don't know if you want to talk about it, approve it. Questions? What? Why did they decide to move it? I thought they were going. To... They, I think they got a little bit scared with the the uh, project coming that it would fall over, and they didn't want to wreck the the stone that were in there. <laughs> they, they've got great footings in there, but the wall also leans, and they're just they got a little gun shy that they could just not have it there and not worry about it. Is what I understood. So, okay. well, what's happening to the stone? 
they're going to get rid of it. They'll tear it out when they come up to the project, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Why would we allow the VFW to uh, erect some type of monument down around the cannon in Veterans Park? Second hand. Motion and second. Uh, discussion. You're okay with the location? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody mentioned to me if we could put it on the west end where the flags are. Is there a room there? I haven't scouted. I would it. like to, but that's where the Oktoberfest back is in there. So we would have to take that one out, probably redo that whole thing if we did that. I, I would love that thing over there, but so it's, it's, they said they just have to rebuild the whole thing because they could just set this one back in that. So it's, it's unfortunate that where it's going to go, it's not going to be a location that a lot of people walk by. I hope, I hope they do. Yeah, but it's but, yeah. not there. I mean, where it was at, right? everybody walked by there. Absolutely, yeah. But maybe, maybe with some advertising or some promoting, maybe we'll get more people down there okay. to come and look at it out of the way. And hopefully. Any more discussion? There we go. All in favor, signify or saying aye. Aye. All the same. Motion carried. Perfect. Any questions? No. Is there a motion to approve Ryan's report? The no. motion. Second. Motion second. Discussion. Discussion. Carried down. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all the same. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. Item number eight is 2017 Street Mobility Improvements Pay Request and factor of the pay request number 10, minus to Holly and Barbie and Detroit Lakes for $37,776.46. Yeah, so this is the final pay request for that project back in 2017. <laughs> um, so we've just been waiting for the IC-134 form that they haven't gotten back. That's a form that needs to be completed before we can give the final payment it has to do with uh, making sure that they fulfill the requirements of the Minnesota withholding tax laws. So they finally got that signed and turned in. So now we can make that final payment for that 2017 project to help. Second. Second. Discussion. Was this money has just been sitting someplace and I'm Burning a hole in someone's pocket. <laughs> My pocket. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been in the account, the bank account. In the, that's the, I have it in a separate fund just for this project. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, same probably saying aye. Aye. All the same. Motion carried. Item number nine, city hall meeting room policy. That was in your packet. All right, we talked about this last time. We wanted to make that little change just to make sure that no meetings would take place after City Hall hours. So I, I highlighted that change in yellow there. So it just states that reservations will not be accepted for times that fall outside of City Hall business hours. All activities associated with the reservation must be scheduled and completed within City Hall business hours. So it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just looking for the approval of the meeting room policy. Oh, second. Motion, second. Discussion. Discussion. Yeah, any interest in? There's been nothing so far, nothing besides city business that's been going on. So, any other discussion? Carrying out, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both the same. Motion carried. Item number 10, ordinance committee discussion. So we have just been talking like we go after going through the ordinance and things. Uh, there's many areas where it needs updating or changing or um, so we're just looking for any council members that are interested in being on a ordinance committee where we can start the process of going through and just updating and correcting some things and through the ordinances. So I think it would be Danielle and I and Todd probably for city staff and then we'd be looking for two Council members. I guess I'd be willing to serve that. 
So how long will this go? Do, do, it would probably take actually a few years. <laughs> it's just a job for you. <laughs> I mean, we'd take it at chunks at a time. I mean, we'd probably yeah. start with chapter nine is what I'd like to do, just to clear that one up. And <laughs> so there's what, 11, is there 11 <laughs> chapters or something? Yeah. No, I mean. Uh, Twice weekly. Yeah. Four hours at a time, yeah. 30 a.m. You volunteering? No. Huh? No. I'm up for lecture a little bit, man. Anybody else want to volunteer? Other than that, you can talk to Kurt. Kurt's not here. Let's <laughs> just <laughs> him. Let's appoint him. That'd be mean. That'd be mean. Sorry, we can't bring him to the Jasons. <laughs> so, how long would you go over each meeting day? I mean, where would they be during the day? Yeah, we'll try. We'd want to have them during yeah. the day, yes. Anything else there, Lance? <laughs> And nothing says we have to have two. I mean, if yeah. it's just Brent that we could make it work. And then, I mean, yeah. everything I mean, has to come to the council for yeah. approval anyway. You guys so. will see it all and approve it all anyways. So, so, if you get home, then I have to so what if I want to do it once in a while? I think we'll just probably break it off chunk by chunk. I, I mean, we'll be, we won't be no. Okay, thank you. Item 11, library report for Schindler Package, just an FYI. Do you have anything there? Nope. Anyone else? Comments? I get a question. There's a leak report in here. How many accidents have been happened on the deep doors? Uh, I was talking with Mike, and he's had a like two that he's been responded to, but he said that it wasn't necessarily due to the detour or anything. It was just they were accidents, I guess. Two, yeah. so two that I know of that were actually since the detour started. Anyway, at the intersection, I'm not exactly sure where they were, but but otherwise, we can have Todd. Next council meeting to kind of exp uh, explain more on that. Yeah. When you're coming, I think from the old uh, from the elevator, and you come out of the old creamery, there's a solid white line. Now, some people get on the right side, some people stay so they don't cross. I mean, that's an issue, right? Oops. You should cross the white line. According to law, you're not supposed to, I believe. No. So you'd like to see a right turn lane there, or you would like to? Well, I, I think it needs to be a little. I, that's an issue I see. Right, you did. Is it, as long as we're talking detour, is it possible? I'm not sure Minda was. Have a stroke at the thought of it, but would it be possible to make a four way stop on the one at the 108 intersection? Four ways we brought up that and also on my faith church, but they won't put up the I've tried to give them a stroke and I haven't <laughs> had any luck with it. So, I mean, that more than once, you know, yeah, traffic gets packed up way back to, to the detour from that intersection. Yeah. They're very hesitant on putting stop signs in where they haven't been before on the, on the major highway like that. But so they haven't gone I for it. No problem with that. <laughs> oh, I just yeah, I'm driving that a lot. Yeah, it's busy coming. You know, the direction. Okay, item number 12, administrator. 
since the last meeting and worked with the clerk and mayor to set the council agenda and prep for the council meeting, attended a department head meeting, attended an EEC meeting, uh, went through the visual quality manual for the 24-25 project and updated the tree grade placement according to those final plans, attended a pool construction meeting, revised and completed the city hall meeting room policy, met with Apex, Otter Tail Power, Max Extraction, Landwear Construction, and MnDOT on the possible installation of conduit for outlets and downtown tree grates as part of the construction project. Uh, attended the Highway 59 108 construction meetings and the open houses. Uh, worked with the PFA to get approval to use the WIF replacement funds for the final clarifier, number four repairs. And then worked on revised drafts of the staff and supervisor performance evaluations. Questions? Full project on the schedule. The, I asked them this morning on that. They're on schedule. I mean, as far as July 4th, probably not, but mid July is what they're still saying. But mid July. Yeah. July. Well, that's always been the target, but realistically, is we're probably looking at mid July to be best case scenario. So then, do we not, do we start? thinking about not necessarily opening this year because so well yeah but I mean kids will start school they'll start their practices and stuff yeah mid-August so if they're not going to open until mid-July well we've got the one start, kids will be going to college in August so from the start we've kind of thought I mean if they don't hit their target of if it's not being able to open first part of July we were thinking of, you know, just having a grand opening weekend, have it open a couple of days, at least in August or whenever that whenever it's possible, because they have to it's going to be filled up and it's going to be ready no matter what this even even if it's in September, they're going to have everything ready. So make sure everything works and get the kinks out. So maybe that's an option where it's just or maybe that's the only way we're going to do it, be able to do it if they if the construction goes long, we open it for a grand opening weekend for people to use it for a weekend and and that might be it i don't know this yeah. season at what point do we where's the life there well that that point we could we could talk with dl and perm and fergus even to have be able to get somebody for the weekend i would certainly think so at what point do we make that decision well it's still i mean it's still hiring for, yeah. well four people that are expecting a job yeah Yeah, even did that is the community center in Fair Lake says they could work up there. So they offered that for other lifeguards, yeah. But I mean, we're still gonna want to continue to recruit lifeguards and um even if we're even if we know right now we're not gonna open, we still want to keep recruiting for next year. But as of now, these four applications he has are expected to work in July. None of them have taken the training. Still, we're preventing them from applying someplace else to get a job this summer. They were even on us kind of. Put them in that bind of they should they should be let known the schedule they may not have a job. Well, I know there's two that it doesn't make much difference whether it is or not. I can't. I'm not sure on the other two. The other one. Well, I know one of them has a full time <coughs> kind of day job. Um, she works for herself. Yeah, most of them it seems like they always have another job too, so they're always working around. But yeah, well, it is also a little question mark on the construction. But Kelly did say that he was going to get, he was going to nail down a little more, more, and try and get a firm date on when they'd be done. But I mean, that's all contingent on other things as well, like the weather and everything else. But. Any other questions for Lance? Thank you. I don't know if the street we went there, but between the church and pool, 
What's the Oh, so you're talking where they're digging in for the water and sewer for the pool now? Yeah, that'll go all get done with the project, with the pool project. They'll patch that, yep. Okay, item number 13, Mayor Report. Just a couple, three items. Uh, first and eighth of May, I attended uh, the Plate Street uh, Construction Staff Meeting, which is already held here at City Hall. We moved them from the Trailer up by the Lion construction trailer here, sometimes due to weather, and also trailer is pretty small for everything we gather into. Uh, also, on first and eighth of May, uh, public meetings still are commencing at the library at noon. Uh, attendance is down. I think last week we had only three or four people from the public there. Plan is if people keep coming, we'll have the meetings, but we may go from an hour to a half hour because an hour is a lot of time to take away from the contractor and there's really nobody there. And the people that have shown up have been to almost every meeting, so they're up to par on what's going on. And also, if uh, it should happen that nobody comes, well, then they'll probably go back to having meetings just once a month instead of uh, weekly. That's the plan. Um, 3rd of May attended a, a copper Copper and Lead meeting here at City Hall with uh, Brian Lance and Bob Sheeman from Apex Engineering, and also Chad Hansen from Mr. Plumbing, regarding the Copper and Lead survey that the city has to do, which every city in the state of Minnesota has to do to uh, serve the public with water. Uh, does it fair to find out where the lead lines are that uh, need to be on an inventory list for future removal? Uh, then uh, yesterday met here with the Administrator Royce to plan the agenda for this afternoon City Council meeting. Any questions? Well, we have a few. We're still not quite sure. There's going to be a survey sent out, the questionnaire sent out to the public. And hopefully the public will respond or they have been to the in the basement. And uh, there's tests that they can do, you know, to see what Type of service material they have coming into the house, whether it's lead, whether it's copper, whether it's EDC or galvanized pipe. And everyone in the, as a water customer, will be receiving one of those. Uh, remember how soon lines? They'll be sending them out soon. You're possibly this week yet. Okay, any other questions? Harry Knight, motion to adjourn. So, second. Motion second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All the same. Aye. 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 Aye.